In this series of videos on silver impregnation techniques, I've previously spoken about the use of ammonical silver when it comes to demonstrating reticular fibres. It turns out that there's another popular silver solution called methanamine silver, which is equally very effective as a reagent for demonstrating basement membranes as well as fungal hyphae. As can be seen here in these two images of stained tissue, on the left we have some renal cortex where silver methanamine has been used to demonstrate basement membranes within the various tubular elements as well as within the uh, renal corpuscle. And on the right we have some tissue that's infected with fungus and you can see the various tubular and branching elements there of the fungal hyphae. So how do these techniques compare to what we've spoken about previously? Well, as you can see here in this brief comparison, um, there is a requirement for oxidation. So that's certainly similar to the Gordon and Sweet technique using the ammonical silver. We use periodic acid in the case of demonstrating uh, basement membranes. And in the case of the fungal hyphae, you need to use a much stronger oxidizing agent in the form of chromic acid followed by a brief treatment with sodium metabisulfite to bleach the tissue. Following the oxidation, however, these techniques are essentially the same staining protocol. Um, in fact, the, the last four steps are essentially the same as the Gordon and Sweet protocol. So there's a lot of similarities across these silver impregnation techniques. Despite these similarities, you will, however, come across a variety of different authors' names that are attributed to these staining protocols. So in the use of the periodic acid technique for oxidizing the tissue, Gamori or Jones um, are often um, the, the names that are given to these protocols. In the case of Gamori, um, you'll come across the abbreviation GPAMS, which stands for Gamori's Periodic Acid Methanamine Silver. Alternatively, for staining of fungal hyphae, Grocot is usually the, the name given to that staining protocol. So given the similarities between these two protocols, we can actually compare them side by side, which further helps to emphasise the differences and similarities. To begin, we treat with either periodic acid for 10 minutes, as you can see here on the left, or we treat for 30 minutes with the chromic acid. So in the case of the Grocots technique, once those slides come out of the chromic acid, you then need to rinse them well in water. And it's usually best to have a, a supply of tap water close at hand to, to promptly rinse those slides. Now on this occasion, I didn't really notice much discoloration of the sections as they came out of the chromic acid, but the protocol advises following the treatment with chromic acid to perform a bleaching step. And the traditional way of doing that is to treat the sections briefly in um, sodium metabisulfite. So to do that, we simply just Flick off the excess water from the slides as demonstrated here and then we just simply um, put on the sodium metabisulfite and apply for a couple of minutes and that should be sufficient. Then once they're bleached you simply wash the slides well in tap water and then at that point whether you're doing GPAMs or Grocots the slides are all basically sitting in water. And it's at this point you can now turn your attention to preparing the silver solution. So this is a lot simpler than preparing the ammonical silver as was demonstrated for the Gordon and Sweet um, protocol. So to make up a total of 50 mils, we start with 25 mils of distilled water. And we place that into a, a glass Copland jar. We then render 
the solution slightly alkaline by adding 2 ml of 5% sodium borate or borax as it's often called. And then just give that a good mix before going to the next step. Which is then to finally add the methenamine silver, also referred to as hexamine silver. And we do this by adding 25 ml of a previously uh, prepared stock of methenamine and silver nitrate. So again, 25 mils, which we then add to the, the Copland jar and then mix it well. And then we can go set that aside while we're going and collecting our slides. So the next very important step in this procedure as for all silver impregnation techniques, is to be very mindful of potential traces of tap water, or more precisely the salts that are present within tap water, which can prematurely precipitate the silver. So we make sure that we flick off the excess tap water that's on the slides. We then give them a thorough rinse in deionized water, and you often need to go back and fill up your bottle a couple of times to really make sure that the slides are, are really nicely rinsed. Both sides, because of course the water can be on the other side of the slide as well. And then we also give the staining rack a really good rinse as well. And there's no harm in overdoing this. You really want to make sure that any traces of tap water are no longer present on the slide when it goes into the silver solution. Including your forceps, give them a good rinse too. So basically anything that's going to come in contact with those slides before going into the silver. So then once you're confident that the slides have been well rinsed, we can transfer them to the working solution of methenamine silver. And at this point, you've got a choice of two methods. You can either heat the slides for between 30 to 60 minutes in, in a water bath at 60 degrees, or more routinely for convenience, we will use a microwave and we include a beaker of tap water as a form of ballast to absorb some of the energy from the, the microwaves. And that stabilizes your solution so that you don't get a superheating of the silver. Okay, so after about a minute on high, we then remove the Copland jar, being careful in case it's hot. But the Copland jar should be hot um, and not boiling. That's what you're aiming for. And you can check the temperature by just briefly touching the outsides and you're looking for that to feel warm. And you need to agitate the Copland jar in order to ensure even distribution of heat throughout the Copland for even staining of your tissue sections. What you're looking for is the development of a brown tone um, within the tissue and often within the sides of the Copland jar itself. In this case we've gone back and we've applied another 30 seconds to a minute of heat and you can see now more noticeably that brown tone is developing quite quickly now. And in fact, I've probably overdone it. It's a bit too hot to handle, as you can see here. I'm just being careful to try and look and see what's going on. And I'm thinking in my mind how much more to give. I'm trying to look at the slides. I can see some brown developing. Um, and that's looking pretty good now. And at this point now, with that degree of discoloration, that's telling me it's about time to go and remove the slides. So it doesn't always go that quickly. Um, but by the time you can see the slides themselves developing a nice uh, chocolate brown colour um, around certain areas, and that tells you that it's time to remove them. And important to rinse them very promptly because the solution is still quite hot and we don't want to get any 
silver baking onto the, the slides. We then rinse them well, obviously still in deionized water. And at this point, I find that it's quite useful to do a little bit of housekeeping. You know, just clean around the back of the slide. You'll find any excess silver that's been deposited can be removed from the back and around the sides of the section. Just helps to start the process of cleaning this up, which um, uh, improves the overall presentation. Once we've done that, it's important to check the quality of impregnation that's taken place. So by looking under the microscope, if we look at those two slides side by side, we can see on the left, what we're aiming for is a dark cooking chocolate brown. That's the best way I find to describe it. Um, within the basement membranes on the left in the section of kidney, there's some lighter background uh, brown staining there as well. And then on the right hand side, we can see quite noticeably uh, a dark brown fungal hyphal elements that are traversing through the tissue. Then in a similar way to the Gordon and Sweets protocol, we then employ gold toning as a way of altering the colour within the section so that now we see more of a grey to black coloration, which really improves the contrast. So just give it a brief rinse in more distilled water. So we see here on the left, the basement membranes now really pop out within the renal cortex. And likewise on the right, we can see the fungal hyphae um, very clearly displayed against a, a light grey background. We then subsequently remove any traces of non-reduced silver from the slides and we do that by brief treatment with sodium thiosulfate and this is often referred to as a fixing step in order to prevent any further deposition of metallic silver to non-specific areas. You then simply apply your counter stain of choice which can either be nuclear fast red as used for the Gordon and Sweet or as demonstrated here brief treatment with light green. So the light green is held relatively lightly within the tissue just by virtue of its size it's a relatively large molecular weight dye so it tends to linger within the various fixed structures. So you have to be careful not to over rinse. So a brief rinse in water after the 30 seconds of staining and then promptly move through the alcohols during the dehydration and subsequent clearing before being cover slipped. So here's the final outcome. On the left once again we've got the kidney section. Um, nice demonstration of basement membranes and a nice counterbalance there of light green. For the section with the fungal elements the slide has been a little bit over rinsed in water so the green is a little bit pale but the important thing there is the demonstration of those fungal hyphae.